All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kadash. Double honors to our apostles and the elders of Great Muslim. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto your elect across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. I'm the brother Sha'ar, the priest Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas branch, coming at you all with another lesson through the Spirit. And Lord's willing, this lesson here is edifying to the flock. I just listened to a lesson yesterday from the Apostle Jahar, and he had posted the lesson a few days ago, and I'm just now, I'm just now listening to it. And even the Apostle Gabar, he actually did a, a land back from that video a few days ago, and I was able to catch that one the day that one came out. But um, this here is just uh, gonna be more so a response to what the Apostle Jahar was saying, and the Apostle uh, Gabar was saying. And for you all that might wanna know what the lesson is, it's on his page, Elders in Transit 3. And that's the Apostle Jahar's most recent page that he had put up. And his video came out about two to three days ago. But it's titled that every one of you do show the same diligence. And when you listen to that lesson that the apostle did, um, he had pretty much touched up on, you know, the feeling of uh, being lukewarm and and how we're not supposed to be feeling that way. I mean, obviously, Revelation, the third chapter talks about if you are lukewarm, then you shall be spewed out of the most high's mouth. And those different tendencies can show up and we want to make sure that we do the best that we can to prevent those tendencies from coming up. All right, and the best way to prevent those tendencies from coming up goes in by way of prayer, fasting, studying, reading, just being around the fire, being around a brother that's on fire, just doing your all to make sure that uh, you don't forsake the ministry. Because a lot of ways that that happens with people, um, a, a key, a key thing that happens is you have those certain guys that tend to forsake the ministry. They're not really that involved no more. You know, they don't really bring out precepts no more. They don't really, they just, they just sit there, you know, they just sit there. Hey, the scriptures talk about how two is better than one, you know, and even matter of fact, I want to pull this precept out, but there's a point that gets touched up on that, in that precept in Ecclesiastes. And it's in the book of uh, Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter. And this is an in transit, by the way, as well. So you're going to hear some noise in the background because I'm just, just doing some driving. Just heading to a particular destination. But this is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 9. And it says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. So if you're in the spirit of being lacking, feeling like you're lacking, feeling like you're not on fire enough, the beautiful thing is the Lord had blessed us to be surrounded by people to help aid us and pick us back up when we're down. And granted, you do have those particular brothers, all right, those believers, your brothers and your sisters, but um, namely, you know, starting with the brothers, you know, that are that are on the front lines within this uh, within this ministry. You do have those brothers that are by themselves. And just because you have those brothers that are by themselves don't mean that they don't feel that same way. So for those of y'all that might be by yourself, like I mentioned earlier, that's where very heavy prayer, very heavy fasting comes to place at. And the Lord could raise up another believer, uh, another brother, some fruit to come by your way. All right. At the end of the day, there's nothing that's too hard for the heavenly father to do. And even Yahweh Shai said, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you're going to move those mountains. And then he further on goes in to say that nothing is going to be impossible unto you. All right. So if you have the heart of faith, the belief of faith, and knowing that the Lord ain't going to just, just have you by yourself, especially in a time of trouble, best believe, you know, it, hey, it, it, even if he doesn't send the individual by that way, the spirit of the Lord is in you anyway. You know, hey, even Yahweh Shai made the statement. This is loosely paraphrased, but he says, you know, hey, the father beareth witness of himself. 
going into how there's always a second witness that's surrounding the spirit. All right, you got the spirit of Yahweh and Yahweh Shah that's with you anyway. All right, but going into those that are in that spirit of lacking, not really studying as much, not really in the spirit of fulfilling a lot, whatever the case is, join up with somebody, tie into the spirit. Now, I want to continue this in Ecclesiastes 4 and 9. I'm sorry, 4 and 10. It says, for if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe unto him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? How can you be on fire and have that lone wolf rogue spirit? It don't work out that way. It does not work out that way. Now, again, granted, you might be in a situation where the Most High will try you and you might feel like you're alone. Look at Jeremiah, for example, when he was in that pit. Look at Elijah, for example. He thought he was by himself. And the Lord, the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord revealed to him that there were 7,000 men that have not bowed their knee unto the image of Baal. All right. So for those of you all that are by yourself, but you in the spirit of diligence, you're going to be taken care of. All right. But again, going back to the point of this lesson, because the reason why I wanted to bring out this example and bring out those verses, which goes into the example of why a lot of individuals lose that spirit of diligence, because they willingly choose to not be around the flame anymore. They make excuses not to come around. They make excuses not to be in the spirit. For those of you all that are by yourself, this doesn't even apply to you. All right. This goes into those that have the squad around them, that have the church around them. Okay, and again, I, I said it multiple times, and this is going to be the third time, but the reason why I brought that example up to those that lose that fire and lose diligence is because they're not around the circle anymore. All right, and ultimately it boils down to the lack of faith. It boils down to lack of faith. Okay, the the elder brother Yat Dazak, the priest Tazaman, myself, we did a live show yesterday. And in that live show we did yesterday, we had continued off in the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter. And that chapter is a very beautiful chapter. And it goes in on faith. And what it specifies in regards to faith is the accounts that our fathers went through and how they persevered on all aspects, even certain of those aspects looking impossible. They persevered by having a good report through faith. All right. They might have, they not even might have. They had certain instances where they felt like they were alone. They had certain instances where they felt like they weren't on fire. They had instances where they felt like the spirit of the Lord wasn't dealing with them. But that didn't change the fact that they, that doesn't change the fact that they didn't keep their eye on the prize. They kept their eye on the prize and they understood the end goal at the end of the day. And when we look at our fathers, even starting with our Lord, Yahweh Shai within himself, because he's the author and the finisher of our, of our faith. And if anybody had the right to complain and the right to say, well, really, I don't even deserve this. It could have been him. But he had the bigger picture in mind. And as our Lord, Yahweh Shai had the bigger picture in mind. Also, those men that came before Yahweh Shai, those prophets that was in that spirit. All right. They had the bigger picture completely in mind. They had the complete understanding on what they needed to do. And. Through their good report of faith We have knowledge We have the understanding We have the scrolls to look at We have those testimonies to look at When we're in those times now, Even the Apostle Paul said In Romans the 15th chapter All things that are written before time Are written for our learning Now if those individuals fainted If they fainted and got weak Around that time We wouldn't have the beautiful story The beautiful heritage that we have right now now, granted, the scriptures even say the Most High could raise up stones so he could do whatever he wanted. But the fact of the matter is he had chose particular chosen men, chosen individuals to help show us how it's done and show us the reward for their faith. And when I say the reward, I'm going into the reward of their faith, the reward that we actually have knowledge of them, how their stories was written, because they fought the fight. And a lot of them, all of them died not receiving the ultimate reward in that time, which is the kingdom of heaven. 
And they still kept that mindset. They still kept that mentality. They still kept their eyes single. So really, when you look at it, we don't really have an excuse. Especially when we look at the times that we're in right now. I mean, we can obviously see things are happening. We can obviously see that Yahweh Shai and the Holy Host of Heaven are getting ready to come back and tear this place up. We can obviously see that re the reward is right next door. Our fathers didn't have that reward. They didn't, well, they had it, all right, but they didn't have the reward that's getting ready to come right now. Okay, so ultimately what I'm going into is they are excuse removers. They are excuse removers. If you feel like you ain't on fire and ain't going out to camp and doing your shows and everything, look at the men of old. Look at their level of faith. And pray unto the Lord that the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard within you to have the fire in you like our fathers had. You know? And I just, you know, just thinking about that just now, I really just speaking through the Spirit. But it would only help. When you look at the spirit that they had, they was on fire and they and they knew that the promise was far off. So how much more can you apply with us? And the beautiful thing is, how I always talk about it takes two to tango. They also were so on fire because they knew the fruit that was to come afterwards. And how they were going to need to be fed. Alright, matter of fact, this leads me to this precept here in the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter. And I'm going to start at verse 38. And this is going into our fathers that had a good report through faith. Man, I'm just passing by a truck right now. In the back of it says 4144. 144, man. Call Because at the end of the day, in order to be of that number, you have to have a good report through faith. All right. But it says here in Hebrews 11 and 38, it says, Of whom the world was not worthy. So the world was not even worthy for these men. The world ain't worthy of you, if you have the elect. And when you go into that word world right there, it's cosmos, which shows you it's talking about a particular sect, which namely, you can start with your own people being Israelites. Hey, the scriptures even say it in the book of Isaiah, the first chapter, the ninth verse, if it wasn't for a remnant, we would have been of Sodom and Gomorrah. Even in the book of Sirach, I believe it's either in Sirach 44, or Sirach 46, I think it's in Sirach 44, it goes into when the, earth, when the earth was flooded in the time of Noah. And when you read it, it says that Noah was made in exchange for the world. And why is that? It's because of his good report of faith. He was literally single-minded in the ways of the Lord. And with his fire and with his dedication toward the Lord, all right, that, 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 that means that Noah had a very special spirit to be that on fire for the Lord in such a time of wickedness and evil. And he was so on fire, so dedicated to the Lord, so diligent that the Lord used him as a vessel. All right, the Lord used him and put him and his household in a vessel so we could all be here right now. And the reason why I use that example because it says here in Hebrews 11 and 38, the world was not worthy of these men. Okay? So you sit back and look at the things that you're doing. And if, you know, if you in that spirit of being lack, you in that spirit of not really being on fire. All right? Look at what those men sacrificed. And literally how the world was not worthy. So to be a partaker within this number, to really have this knowledge, you got to really be a special spirit to have this knowledge man and knowing that you really shouldn't take it for granted because the Lord don't need you the Lord don't need us but he called us so since we've been called we gotta prove we gotta prove unto the most high now I'm gonna continue to read this here in Hebrews 11 and 38 and it reads of whom the world was not worthy they wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth all things having obtained a good report through faith received not the promise. And that's the point that I wanted. They didn't even receive the end all be all promise. They didn't receive the kingdom of heaven. And this is thousands of years ago. And they knew that it wasn't going to come at that time. But they still kept their integrity. They still were very much indeed dedicated into this craft. All right. They were dedicated into this ministry. 
and we are their fruit. We are that fruit. If they didn't have that spirit, we wouldn't be here today. And the reason why I want to use it as an example, because if we have, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'd rather say it like this. If they had that mentality, that if they had that mentality that the guys, the Apostle Hart was talking about, if they, if they had that mentality, we wouldn't be here. So we should really appreciate the fact that we still have this knowledge and we've been called to be part of something special. We've been called to be part of something special. This ain't no light thing. Now, verse 40 is very heavy. And it says, the Most High, having provided some better thing for us, it says that they, without us, should not be made perfect. So they wouldn't be perfect without us, and we wouldn't be perfect without them. You know? This thing of ours is very needed in the earth right now. This thing of ours, what we do, is very needed in the earth, just as it was needed in the earth around that time. And the Lord is using you to, 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 to be part of this change, to be part of this spiritual revolution. Literally, this is a shift of an age. And it talked about how they were made perfect through us. Okay? Because this is the end of it. Hey, the scriptures say better is the end of a thing than the beginning of it. We are literally the fruit of those men and the works that we're doing. The works that we're doing right now all right, are literally showing the world what these men were talking about. What these men prophesied about what was to come. Okay? So if you're in the spirit of being, being, being lacking, if you're in the spirit of uh, not being on fire, if you're not in the spirit of diligence... Pray the Lord really enhance that spirit, enhance that flame that's within you. Because when Yahweh comes back, he's going to be looking for those servants that are doing. And the scriptures also says to make sure that our lamps are burning in that day when our Lord comes back. All right. So, you know, I really wanted to touch up on that. It was really just on my spirit. Uh, and it was just in a transit really was just talking through the spirit, speaking through the spirit. But uh, we want to make sure that we don't squander this gift. I did a lesson a few weeks ago, about a month ago, going into how refraining of our lot can put us to death. We can get put to death from refraining from our lots. And the Lord, it's, it'd be a light thing for the Lord to raise somebody else up in your stead because you're not fulfilling what he told you to do. You're burying those talents in that napkin. All right. It's a light thing for him to take that talent away from you and give it to somebody else that already got those 10 talents. The Lord can do that. You know? So... Allow this message to help aid us in faith and move you with fear to perform those good works and be on fire, you know? So I believe I touched up on the point. I'm going to end it off there. Lord's willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rechach, Odash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto you elect across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling a lot in all truth and all sincerity. Shalom.